from the Center for Agricultural Profitability at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. This is Nebraska Farmcast. I'm Ryan Evans. New survey data from the USDA points to an increase of 21% in Nebraska farm real estate values in 2022, up $650 for the year to an average of $3,750 per acre. For insights on the factors driving current trends in land values as well as cash rental rates, I am joined by University of Nebraska-Lincoln agricultural economist Jim Jansen. Jim, thanks for joining me. I mentioned that Nebraska land values increased by 21% over the last year, according to new USDA data, up to $3,750 per acre. So how does Nebraska compare to other states in the region in terms of that rate of change in these values for 2022? If you look at the publication that the United States Department of Agriculture put out, you'll see that states in the western corn belt tended to show the most strength. And what I mean by that was Nebraska was ranked third in terms of percent change. Neighboring states such as Kansas came in at an increase for the overall average, which takes into account just not the uh, cropland, irrigated dry land, or grazing land, but an average across all the different types of land. Uh, Nebraska came in at third. Kansas came in at first. And all states, Iowa was ranked at second. And Iowa's land values tend to be much higher than they are here in Nebraska when you take into account all the different types. The big take home from this is if you look at a map, many of these states have uh, presence of livestock, which yes, there is livestock in all of the corn belt, but uh, places such as Iowa has a very robust feeding industry when it comes to the swine industry there. Nebraska has a very high uh, rate of cattle and feed. We also have other types of livestock, uh, swine confinements, poultry facilities of various kinds. And Kansas also has a very robust livestock industry. So it seems to me that the trends are occurring very similar in the western Corn Belt, where we have livestock, and also in states such as Nebraska, Kansas, where we have irrigation. So those are some of the trends of what we're seeing. Neighboring states follow a very similar trend to what Nebraska has. Cropland values in the state rose 21% to an average of $6,000 per acre. That's good for the second highest increase in the country behind Kansas. So what are some factors behind those increases in cropland values? Well, first and foremost, many of the common commodities that, uh, such as corn, soybeans, wheat, we've seen an exceptional year over the last uh, 12 to 14 months now. The prices for many of the common crops that we grow has reached exceptional prices. And uh, the value of what we have relates to the value of what we can do with it. So with the higher commodity prices, increased profitability, uh, we've seen that being capitalized into some of the different types of land that serve the cow or the crop industry. Also, um, given the drought that we've been seeing, there has been uh, different types of disaster assistance payments made that have helped maintain the liquidity of different uh, operations across the Corn Belt in the United States as well. And um, with that being said, we've had, uh, I know interest rates have crept back up, but uh, starting off 2022, we were still at a very competitive rate. Uh, when COVID hit, the Federal Reserve did things with the monetary policy in the United States that uh, the interest rates uh, were lowered to stimulate the overall economy. And with that market stimulation, we had a very competitive interest rate for the different types of real estate, whether it's land, commercial uh, equipment, agricultural tractors, combines, even uh, resident exceptional interest rate. That would probably be another factor that, at least in part of 2021 and 2022, we've seen a very competitive interest rate. So what are some of the factors leading to the, the current interest rates that we're seeing? Or excuse me, the current market values that we're seeing? One of those would be interest rates early on in 22, as well as um, commodity prices and different forms of disaster assistance. Great. And pasture land in the state is up just under 15% in the last year, now averaging $1,240 per acre in Nebraska. 
With drought conditions continuing and uh, these high land values, what are some strategies that livestock producers could look to to be profitable? Well, one, drought is influencing everyone differently across the state. This past winter so far, we've seen some of the areas of the state in the northeast and north central corridor that have experienced exceptional drought have some of the highest rates of snowfall that we've had in the last couple of years. So hopefully we're going to get some degree of relief when it comes to the drought pressure with the adequate fall types of precipitation subject to it impacting us adversely as producers, but hopefully so that's the first thing is, one, be aware of what's actually happening with moisture. Two, match the environment with the livestock. So maybe the drought years are some years where you don't uh, actively place the livestock at a rate that you might be more commensurate of a year where it's uh, actively draining adequate groundwater resources over the winter time to have good uh, forage production in the spring and the results in summer. We you think critically about what is an appropriate management strategy, does that mean you maybe cut back on that number of head of cattle? If you cut back on the cattle that you own, and that we do see a situation where rainfall does turn to have to dry, maybe think about taking some cattle in on a temporary basis until you build that livestock inventory. If we can navigate what we're seeing, making uh, prudent decisions on our livestock inventories and matching them with the environment that we're seeing. And also communicating with a landlord. I know landlords, be used to, especially uh, on cropland, getting a steady cash rent over time or maybe it doesn't fluctuate a lot. There are areas of the state, unless we get adequate moisture, there may have to be a fairly substantial stocking rate reduction. And that's part of an education on a producer's behalf that they have to conduct with their landlord, especially if they're dealing with an absentee landowner. How do we set a cash rental rate that's going to be reflective of the unique circumstances that are making up grazing land and livestock production in 2022 and 2023? Now, the USDA also reported new county-level cash rent estimates for last year in Nebraska. So what are some trends and influencing factors in this new data that you see? Yeah, so a few things to note on their survey. It's typically published in odd-numbered years, but they, on occasion, they did happen to do it in 2022 as well. As part of their county-level cash rent survey in the state of Nebraska, they report estimates for irrigated and dry land cropland and grazing land. Now, on the cropland side, they are reporting annual cash rent estimates. And typically, we see there's nothing set in stone, but a lot of the leases we see in the state start in early to mid-May, and then they proceed through the following year to rent lease. Verbal leases, you run anywhere here up until February 28th, or if it's a leap year, February 29th of the following year. On grazing land, my current understanding of what they do on this survey, their grazing land cash rental rates are the per acre summer average that is paid. So my understanding is it's a per season cash. So if you typically rent your property out this time or you're renting from someone for the summertime, the cash rental rate is the rate paid per acre for the grazing land summer. A few other trends to take note of inside of their service, there's grazing land, irrigated, dry land. You'll notice some of the counties in their survey are in white. If the counties are in white, that means there's not enough responses that they think can reduce the number with confidence, or there is not a lot of that particular being or grazing practice in that county. An example, we tend to not see irrigated cropland in South and Santos. What limited irrigation there is maybe for folks that raise silage, grain, or uh, forages for their immediate farm use, farm or ranch use, not that individuals that are at raising commodities can necessarily be sold. There are cases where that exists, but relative to a county like Buffalo County, which is where County Nebraska is located, that has an exceptional amount of irrigation. It's a lot different environment there. So if there are also some counties that are in white for grazing land. If the counties in white for grazing land, once again, they either did not have a number produced with confidence, they didn't get enough service, they could estimate a number with methodology or procedures. 
or the other or is there's just not a lot of grazing land. And you'll see there's certain counties in southeast Nebraska reporting averages that don't have a lot of numbers behind them because there's just not a lot of grazing. So overall, those are some of the major trends that we're seeing when it comes to grazing land, crop land, and uh, cash rental rates on dry land as well. The other one other quick thing to note on the irrigated cash rental rates, the the USDA does not divide out the gravity or flood irrigation center pivot averages. The University of Nebraska, the third survey, they do, but the USDA does not they produce a weighted average that accounts for some of the different cash rental rates. And do you have any more comments or insight on uh, just how the National Agricultural Statistics Service at USDA gathers the information here that we've been talking about on land values and rental rates? The USDA cash rental rate information, when it is published, the raw numbers are published. My understanding is in late August, and then the maps and the different figures, uh, per county cash rent estimates, those are published traditionally the second week in September. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the statewide average market value, the estimated market value of land in Nebraska, that is actually published in early August. So we'll look forward to seeing some of those updates in 2023. Great. That is Jim Jansen, agricultural economist with Nebraska Extension and the Center for Agricultural Profitability here at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. You can find a new article where he is diving into some of the numbers we've been talking about here on the podcast from the latest USDA NAS reports of land values and county level cash rental rates. That's on our website at cap unl.edu that's c-a-p dot u-n-l dot e-d-u nebraska farmcast is a production of the center for agricultural profitability at the university of nebraska lincoln for the latest research-based information and education resources to manage your farm or ranch operation visit our website at cap dot u-n-l dot e-d-u that's c-a-p dot u-n-l dot e-d-u 